Jack White is away. He's got some more. I had some really high highs, now I've had the really low lows, and whatever comes with that, I just gotta take it and, and roll with the punches. I was a tragic. Wait. I'd nearly have every NRL team's jersey, and whenever Friday night footy was, whatever team was playing, I'd throw on that jersey, and I'd go play like a little preview game in the front yard by myself, I'd commentate. I was obsessed with footy, no doubt. That's all sort of done through my manager to start, and then he'll correspond with me being like, oh, Melbourne have given you an offer, and What's your initial thought when you hear that? Melbourne, like, like Melbourne Storm. Not many people ever get this opportunity at 19 to go down to Melbourne and work their craft under the best fullback to ever play the game. You dream of playing an NRL grand final, you dream of winning one, but then scoring a try in a grand final, it was just pure joy. I remember watching it and I remember there was discussions that it was like a, a car crash victim. Very, very painful. Straight um, away? Straight away. The doctor was just pressing on it and I could just feel fragments of bone just separating as he pushed oh. his finger into it. Yeah, he just looked at me and said, you've broken your kneecap. What did the x-ray look like? Like someone taking a baseball bat to my knee. <laughs> <laughs> what was your worst day? Around that eight, nine month mark when I thought I'd be back. You just question whether it's ever going to be the same again. Why me? I've let all these people down again. It's part of my story now. I can relate to people who have, have gone through a tough time or a tough injury and if I can be someone who goes out there and performs at a high level it just shows them that they can do something similar. So, I remember watching it and I remember there was discussions that it was like a, a car crash victim. It really hit me yesterday when I was watching um, the, I presume it was the doco the storm did, 25 yep. minute doco following when you get to over to the states and see Bill which we'll get to yep. and at the start of that there's dramatic music playing and the coach is talking about well you know, no we're not going to see him we're not going to see him for the rest of the season but it wasn't what he was saying it was the look on his face and the tone in his voice and he was just absolutely devastated mm. that one of his boys was going through yeah. what he was going through what what are your memories of of what happened to, it sounds crazy, but but did it hurt? What happens when you go into the rooms afterwards? Like, mm. uh, are you happy to talk about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's I think I think me talking about it might help someone going yes. through something similar. And I, like I said, I I really enjoy doing that. So, uh, yeah. First initial thoughts when it happened was, so what did your knee hit? His knee. So it was right knee on knee. Right knee. Yeah, knee on knee. Uh, mine was planted, sort of in like a squat position. And he was just coming full pelt at me. So, um, yeah, direct hit. Very, very painful. Straight um, away. Straight away. So you knew something's not good. In knew something wasn't right, but I didn't know the extent of it. Sometimes you you cop a hit in footy and you think it's the worst thing ever, and it, you go in at half time and the doc will be like, "No, nah, you'll be good and you'll be right." Just run back out there and you're sweet. So, I think that's what went through my head because I've had a few little injuries. I was like, "All oh, right, like this is so sore." Like you're nearly hoping that. Like, it's bad, so you're not carrying on. <laughs> like, you're sort of just like, fuck, that was like, <laughs> ouch. But I was rolling the ground and then yeah, probably fuck, wasn't. That was like, ouch. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that hurt. But then, I don't know, you're just trying to, like, I think the whole pain just takes over in your mind of, I don't know what it is, but this is like, this is, this really hurts. And then obviously the physio comes over, presses on it, goes, oh, yeah, I think we've just sort of got a knock. Do you want to just try stand up? I think there's footage of me just trying to stand up and as soon as I put weight on I just, yeah, it's not just good. collapsed and went, nah, that's not good. And still at that time, I don't know what, I don't know what I've done. Like I think um, maybe it's just a really bad cork. That's what I was thinking. But I'm like, do you get corks in your kneecap? Or like, I think the pain was just above my kneecap. So I was like, maybe I've just been hit there and then it's just like shot down and yeah, got carried off down the sheds and then the doctor was just pressing on it and like sort of just like... I guess if you press on like your, your quad, I guess you can feel it like separate. Yep. So he was doing that on my kneecap and oh. I could just feel, yeah, just feel fragments of bone just separating as he pushed oh. his finger into it. And um, yeah, he just looked at me and said, yeah, you've, you've broken your kneecap. So I thought, ah, oh, broken bone, six weeks, you know, you'll be... <laughs> be sweet. I like your positive approach and, immediately. <laughs> six weeks. So quite positive about it. Um, no painkillers at this stage, just sort of like, oh, I was fine with it. I did my rib cartilage a few plays before. So I was like, oh, actually, though, my rib's a bit sore. Can you check that as well? So he'd, he'd been pressing my knee. I'd forgotten about it. He put a big brace on it. He's like, we'll go get you an x-ray. 
whatnot. We'll check your rib out. I remember going to the hospital and just like complaining about my rib being like, oh, like this is like, I think I need a jab, but my rib is cooked here. So you're more concerned about your rib than your knee? Yeah, more concerned about my rib. And then um, as we went in to get the x-rays and we were like, I was sitting there just on the bed and the surgeon doctor was just in front of me. He's like, all right, we're going to get you up for an x-ray now. Um, we can't give you painkillers because you don't know how soon we're going to operate on you. So I'm just sitting there being, yeah, like that's all right. And I think I was still in a bit of shock. Um, obviously seeing my knee, it was just this big ball on top. And I was like, that's not normal. But I'm like, maybe it's just like, that's just the way it reacts to a hit. And whatnot. I remember just being at a ball, still still really naive to what was to come. Like I just saw, yeah, there'll be an x-ray once again, get a scan, might be a couple months, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then once I went up and got the x-ray and came back, it was the first time I'd like stood up and been like moved along and all the blood just rushed straight from my head and like I nearly passed out. I had to have like the nausea tablets and- um, From the pain? Yeah, from the pain. And they just said, yeah, we'd, we need to sort you yeah, out. This is bad. And I remember him showing me the the x-ray of the knee and- What did the x-ray look like? <sighs> like someone taking a baseball bat to my knee. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was quite shocking. But then again, like I hadn't had a long-term injury. You know, I had that concussion, but- I feel like it, it was quite different. Um, I hadn't had a long-term injury. I still didn't know I was in for the 14 months that I was in for, but I remember looking at being like, oh, shit, like, how are they going to put that back together? And I think the thing that stands out was how naive I was to it all. I just thought, oh, this will be fine. Like, I'll get it back. And then you start reading a few things and, um, yeah, oh, this might be a few months. It's quite a difficult rehab. And, yeah, fast forward a few months and... So what was the moment when you actually realised what it was going to mean? <laughs> I don't know. Everyone around me was so positive and I think I probably needed that just to, I feel like if someone told me how hard it was going to be early, I don't know. But if you told me how hard it was going to be after two months, when I knew how hard it was going to be after 14, oh, that would have been disastrous. And <laughs> What was your worst day? Um, worst day was probably around that eight, nine month mark when I thought I'd be back. And then you run and you look down at your quad and your quad's still not back to the same size as it was before. And you just question whether it's ever going to be the same again. And that was scary. And I think, like I spoke to, to Charlie Kerno, who had a, quite a similar injury. Yeah, yeah and, he did, yeah. Um, like he was awesome. He said any, like we'd catch up for coffees and anything I was going through, he'd just be there to listen to and say, yeah, like I've had something similar or no, I didn't. And it just gave me a bit of direction to go, okay, maybe it's not normal. Maybe I do need to seek something else or do something else differently. And yeah, it probably wasn't until that eight, nine month mark where I went overseas and, and seen Bill Knowles where I probably got that, that kick I needed. So in the, in the video again, your, your, your first meeting, I presume it is with your first meeting with Bill, yeah, and he's he's not talking about athletic performance. He's like how you're traveling as far as sitting in a chair or standing up or walking, and that, that was when it hit me. It was like, wow, mm. this is a really serious, <laughs> really serious um, injury. Why Bill, and and what did Bill do for you physically? And yeah. it sa listening to him, it sounded like he's pretty in tune mentally as well, not just oh, physically. Big Billy, he's he's changed my career. Has he? Yeah, he. That's I, a good rap. I think. What he's done for me and what I've been through is, yeah, I, it's, it's probably the best thing I've ever done in my NRL career. So um, I guess to break it up, what he does is, I'd say he's like a performance, a movement specialist is how he declare himself. And mm -hmm. um, you obviously hear a lot of things about who he's worked with and what he's done. And so who's he worked with for those that are not aware of him? Oh, he, well, he's worked with Tiger Woods. Yep. He's done some stuff with Tiger Woods, That's Nick Bosa, a um, few of the AFL boys as well. Tigers, you've got me at Tiger. Tiger Woods, yeah. But he just, I think, because he's seen so much and, and seen different personalities, different individuals, he sort of knew how to approach my way. And first day he got there, he, he just sort of sat there and he was ear to listen. Like, he just listened to me. He just said, yep, like, I could tell you're frustrated. Like, it's this sucks if I had this done to like he just really understood what I was about and to have a stranger relay that back to you it was like all right like he might not feel like he's helping me in this moment but just for him to listen to me and listen to my frustrations because I feel like 
no knock to our physios, but they've got 40 other guys yes, to look after. Yes, of course. You know, it's like my concerns might be not, they're worried, they're probably worried about the guys who are a chance of playing. I was no chance of playing. And for him to just sit back and listen and, and give me a clear plan forward and give me reassurance of, no, I back, he's like, I back you, dude. Like, you'll get back to that. Like, you'll be doing that again. And I was like, oh, like, just to hear that, you know, it's so refreshing because there's periods where I don't feel like he's like, you're not going to feel like it right here. You're not going to get to the end of these two weeks and be like, oh, I'm good to run out there and score heaps of tries and kick heaps of goals. But he said, it is a process and we will get there. Like, he was adamant we will get there. And I think for him to say that and the way he just goes about his whole process and pumps you with confidence, you're never doing anything wrong. There's always ways you can improve. Mm. But there was <laughs> never a moment I felt like I was behind. Um, and yeah, it just changed my whole perspective on a, and on long-term rehab and um, how to do it differently if something happened again, which I did. So. <laughs> well, mate, you come back September 2023 20, qualifying final against the Brisbane Broncos, you lose the game. It's the first time I was watching the game live because um, I'd read what you'd been through and, you know, people, are, it, it was a big story. It was the first time I've seen one of those sort of plastic blow-up things that they put around, which in your case is your ankle. I'd never seen one of those oh, before. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then you've, well, you busted your ankle, yeah? Mm. It was horrible. Mm. How do you not, or do you go, poor me? Oh, no, definitely. I I went poor me straight away. I think it was the first sort of emotion I felt was... Well, the, the whole country went poor Ryan, so... Yeah. <laughs> no, well, why me is probably the okay. the one, you know? Why me? Why me? Um, I've let all these people down again. You thought you'd let people down? Yeah. Oh, geez, that's a bit of a harsh yeah. judgment. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, now, now I see that as, as quite a harsh way to look at it, but in that moment I was, yeah, like... Like why me? I, I've worked so hard. I've I've done everything I could, um, and I guess after being through what I went through for so long with the knee, the only natural instinct you think of is, "Fuck, I'm going to go through another twelve months." Yes, you know, um, and it did look gruesome right at the start. Yeah, it, it, that was more painful than the knee. Was it? Yep, that was more painful than the knee. So what did you do to your ankle? So I snapped my fib. Right. Took a little bit of my tib off when the syndesmosis snapped as well. Um, and then I dislocated my ankle. So, yeah, it was, <laughs> I think done. visually, because I couldn't visually see my knee, there's anything wrong with it. Um, yeah, straight away looked at my ankle and it probably... Facing the wrong way. Facing the wrong oh, way. Horrible. Um, and, yeah, the, the pain during that was, yeah, was quite immense. But, yeah... <laughs> the first initial thoughts of yeah like i've i've let i've let people down again and um yeah like why why does it have to be me you know I'd, what have i done wrong what what do i need to do more to to get a good run at the at this and um yeah i guess it's only it's only natural to think that way and how long do you have those thoughts for um probably until i was i was you get carted off and you go down into the tunnel and you're sort of sitting there um then the green whistle kicks in, I think. So right. <laughs> the green whistle kicks in and then I quickly shifted my focus to, to wanting a snack pack because I was hungry. So. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, like it's one of those ones where the emotion just takes over and um, I guess I'm probably a little bit embarrassed with how I initially thought, but I think when you're in a desperate situation like that, you, you sort of can't control it and, and it's just up to then what you do after that and how you control your emotions, which which I've learned a lot better from the first rehab and um, yeah, probably took me a while, but you do feel sorry for yourself for a bit. So what have you learned? Like resilience is such a, a modern buzzword, mm. not just um, in sport, in life and with your kids you want them to be resilient like if you if you if i wanted one thing for my kids it's to be resilient because life's not always easy what mm. have you learned about resilience through this um, extended period i think it's important to have people around you i think it's important to have people who like i said at the start of my career gave me that scaffolding nurtured me in a way that they're not telling me everything to do but they're giving me the right direction um i think yeah support's one of those ones where you have it around you but you've you probably take it for granted at times and um, I know I did during the first one and yeah during the second one I think in order to be resilient you need some good support around you and 
it's it's quite it's quite hard to do sometimes, but you've got to you've got to put things into perspective. Um, here I am, still getting paid. Here I am, still with an opportunity to come back. Here I am, in the hands of the best people in the world to get my body right again. There's some people who might be in a car crash that have a similar injury and they can't afford the physio. They can't mm. afford seeing a psychologist every week, you know. And I had the tools to be able to do that. And um, yeah, like there's going to be times where you're caught down and you you're thinking the worst and um, it can be all relative, but yeah, I think support network's a massive one. You need good support. Um, you need to put things into perspective and you've just got to see it as part of your journey. That's probably my third one. Um, it's part of my story now. I have I can relate to people who have, have gone through a tough time or a tough injury and um, if I can be someone who goes out there and center stage now and, and performs at a high level, it just shows them that they can do something similar. So um yeah, I think perspective, support network and, and just inviting it into your journey and embracing it for what it is.